You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I was on Twitter, scrolling through Twitter this morning, lying in bed, which is kind of, I think a lot of people probably wake up and you start scrolling through your phone. And I saw something about Ron DeSantis. It was some liberal on, on the Twitter feed uh, said something that Ron DeSantis has deployed woke busters into schools in Florida. And uh, this was news to me. We're in Florida. I had not heard about this. So I Googled DeSantis woke busters. And an article came up in Salon. Now, Salon is very left-wing, okay? So I'm going to read from this Salon article, and we'll go through this and break it down. But Salon is very, very liberal, all right? And I haven't read Salon, I don't know, in years. I didn't even know Salon was still in existence. But um, here's the headline. Call the woke busters. Ron DeSantis sends volunteer army to snatch books from students' hands. Okay, now, I, that's just the headline. <laughs> this might take the whole podcast to get through this article. Now, it won't. We'll get through it in the first segment here. Not everything that is written in a book is okay for school, okay? And kids, kids can't, it's, can't walk around with the joy of sex or Karma Sutra or something, okay? There's, there's, there's you know, you got to have Didn't some Didn't you standards. say that was in your... School library, one of those kind of books. The Joy of Sex was in my high school library. Somebody, yeah. was it cataloged? Did it actually have like yeah. a thing to check it out? Absolutely. And this was in the 80s. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go through this liberal salon article on DeSantis. We'll just read through it and stop along the way and discuss. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis may not want a reputation as a book banner, but that's not slowing down the Republicans' efforts to knock as many books out of the hands of students, both college age and younger. In fact, Florida Republicans' war on reading is only escalating, with the GOP engaged in a full-scale gaslighting project to deny what is clearly a campaign of threats and intimidation to keep teachers from letting kids read. Now, it is not up to teachers to decide what books are allowed in school. The schools are for the public. They're paid for by, you know, taxpayers and run by the local school districts, the counties and the state. It's not up for teachers to write their curriculum. In Florida, we have a curriculum it's, uh, and it's called the Sunshine State Standards Yeah, because we're in the sh- uh, Sunshine State of Florida. And in Florida, we have this thing called the Sunshine Law. Everything the government does has mm-hmm. to be out in the sunshine, including the Sunshine State Standards. And they have determined for as long as I can remember what books are allowed in schools. Teachers don't make up their own curriculum. I thought liberals liked big government. This, Not this, this is time. Understand. No, they don't like this. They only no. like big government when it's when they're the ones making the decisions. Exactly. But when it's a conservative government, then it's bad. Yeah. But if it's a liberal government, you know, they can do whatever the hell they so, want. So it's... The school classroom is not TikTok. These teachers, they got a TikTok mm. that they, uh, you know, they do videos in their classroom and they think it's their classroom to do whatever they want. It doesn't work that way. We have no. state standards uh, in our schools and that's how it should be. Uh, last week, the investigative journalist team at Popular Info, which I've never heard of before, published a report showing that teachers in Florida are being told to lock up their classroom libraries or risk felony prosecution. Images of bookshelves being put behind barriers and stories of children crying quickly went viral. That's when the gaslighting began. Now, this is when the teachers are bringing in their own books, okay, that are not on the approved reading list for the school. Uh, Ron DeSantis's lieutenant governor and Florida commissioner of education called the story fake news and accused the teachers of overreacting. But as Judd Legum of Popular Info confirmed, he had never heard of him or this thing, in a follow-up report, the Florida Commissioner of Education's recommendations to teachers directly contradicts the training produced by his own agency, which requires all books to be pre-screened and warns that the censors must err on the side of caution when deciding if a book fits the very right-wing definition of harmful to minors. 
As Legum points out, one author that's been frequently targeted by Republicans is Pulitzer Prize winner Toni Morrison, making it clear that it's not pornography that is in dispute here, which no one actually thinks teachers were providing, but internationally renowned literature. That explains why books about the Holocaust of Martin Luther King Jr. have also been frequently targeted by Republicans for bans. Um, Okay, there have been some things with the Holocaust where they include images of Holocaust survivors that are nude, that have not been allowed, okay? Mm-hmm. That's, so that's, you know, an issue there. Um, I don't know about any Martin Luther King books being, uh, but, but see, Toni Morrison, a few years ago, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago, all of a sudden they started taking out all the American classics and replacing them with what they call the new classics. The new classics, yeah. And the new classics are Toni Morrison. And I, I, you know, I don't know, Toni Morrison. No, I, see, I don't like her at all. You know, I, I don't know. Why not Zora Neale Thurston? You know, well, Toni Morrison's you know, books. She's much better. I've never read. I've seen, I think, maybe one of the movies on TV or something. And they seem to be like sexual in nature and romance novels. Or Neil Hurston. I'm sorry, I said her name wrong. Is Toni Morrison the like romance books? She did. Uh, didn't she do Stella's Got Her Groove Back or? I don't know. It, waiting it, it, to Exhale. I, yeah, they don't seem like, you know. She hates white thin. women. I could tell you that. Yeah. Meanwhile, as Republican politicians play don't believe your lying eyes games, they're also amassing a volunteer army of wannabe censors um, who are ready to descend on schools to make sure no um, book slips by their anti-reading dragnet. Uh, The Manatee Patriots, a right-wing group in Florida's Manatee County. Ooh, I like that name. Yeah, recently put out a recruitment call for woke busters to be the eyes and ears and boots on the ground in the schools to stop educators from filling libraries with these mm. books. Okay, now they have a link here. The Manatee Patriots. I don't know. They maybe they're a real group, but I, I'm clicking on their link. Yeah. Community Patriots, um, woke busters wanted, and they have a picture of the Ghostbusters um, calling all woke busters. Woke busters wanted. We all have skin in this game, whether you're a taxpayer, parent, grandparent, community member. Mm. Woke busters, I like that. Um, the society that's being created by this deranged wokeness is nothing more than mental abuse for children, which will ultimately lead into physical abuse. We must all do our part to save the children in our society. Uh, woke busters is what I need. Warriors, digital, investigative, and boots on the ground. Uh, we need book titles looked up on the school website. Um, we need spreadsheets made of inappropriate books. You know, there's a long list here. I don't know, but I'm suspect of this uh, right-wing wokebusters. It's it's possible it's liberals the, pretending the, the to be. The wordage sound is very liberal to me. Yes. The way they're Skin writing in the, game. the tone That's and the way ob- they're writing it. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it just sounds like a liberal wrote it. Yeah, skin in the game is an Obama term. Yeah. Okay, that's what he said to Joe the Plumber. Because and, you know why? Uh, is there any mention of God or anything in there? No. Well, there you go. No, that's no, that t- no. tips you right off. No, but it, it because a li- very conservative suspicious. would talk about God and country and um, things like that. This is more like aggressive and more on the attack, which is how liberals do things. Yeah, this a conservative group would be like, you know, we got to protect our Christian values and yes. and blah blah blah, and mention God and 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 the yeah. country and patriot. You know, the wordage just doesn't match to me. No, and you know, a, it doesn't. It's not to say there aren't conservatives in this group. A lot of times people can be duped into being part of something and they really don't know what it is. Um, Recently, the Manatee County Patriots celebrated what they claim was a successful effort to force a public library to take down a display celebrating LGBTQ history. They objected to the library's alliance with a local youth group that serves gay teens, claiming it's the first stage of grooming and porn. Um. More things found in the library. Their site reads, uh, offensive materials flagged included uh, Michelle Obama's memoir and the history of Barack Obama's presidency. That That's, I don't buy that. Mm. They, why, why would they go after Michelle and Barack Obama? That doesn't yeah. make sense. Um, not, and, and by the way, they're talking about a local public library, not a school library. Uh, they not only want to erase sex education, well- who are these teachers that bring sex education into the schools? I remember when liberals and still now wanted to get rid of like Mark Twain. I mean, yeah. that's okay for them because yeah. they use, he uses the N word. Not only do they want to erase sex education, but documented evidence uh, shows that they uh, that they want to erase that the U.S. once had a black president. This is all fake. Oh my this gosh, is all fake. This is 
Now, again, like I say, they always tip their hand. There could be some real conservatives in this group, but this group is organized and run by fake conservatives. Yeah, you can tell too because they always go too far. Yeah, to the race thing. They always take it too, a little too much to the extreme. That always tips their hand. Yeah. Yeah. The Manatee Patriots website has pages dedicated to stirring up outrage over what they deem filth that students are reading and digging through the social media presence of woke busters. Um, um, Patriots only piles on the worry that these are people who are um, worried about the little golden book, about the porky little puppy. I don't know. They're going on about a bunch of things here. Um, Let me tell you, here's here's the way it is, okay? There are school teachers, the school, the, the teaching profession has been taken over in very large numbers by a lot of these radical activists. Oh, yeah. Okay, they're not school teachers. They're radical activists who have gotten college degrees and are teaching. And what they're doing is doing their own curriculum with their own reading list and their own months. And you'll see on TikTok, I saw uh, on Libs of TikTok the other day, one teacher who made a video in a room on TikTok, and she was bragging there's no American flags in her class, but there's LGBTQ flags and things all over the classroom. And that's what they're all about. They got an agenda going. That's why I always tell parents, go to parents' night, see your kid's classroom, yeah. especially the beginning of the year. Yeah. when the Because t- teachers decorate their classrooms like mm-hmm. a week before the school year. So they they have it fully decorated. And go there uh, the f- at parents' night, which is usually within the first month, and see the classroom yeah. for yourself and see what's hanging up. Yeah. And if there's no American flag, that's a red flag. That's that's for sure. And I thought the American flag was required in classrooms. Not anymore, I guess. And, you know, while this these woke busters may be fake, some liberal group pretending to be conservative, Ron DeSantis, what this article shows me in Salon is that Ron DeSantis has very good reason to f- make sure that what's in the classrooms is permitted and not – uh, against rules, well, regulations, see, is, or laws, because what they're doing yeah. is they're getting way out of control and out of hand on all kinds of craziness in the classrooms. Well, this is what I talk about. This is a way of manipulating the right. Yeah. They do things like this to get a reaction uh-huh. out of Ron DeSantis, and then they can use his reaction against him. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a bait. Yeah. They're baiting him. Oh, let's have these teachers... Uh, you know, put up a rainbow flag, and then he'll react to that, and then we can call him a bigot. Yeah, it's it's exactly a way of manipulating the situation yeah. and goading people into doing something and making an issue out of something that really isn't an issue. Now, yeah, it's it's um, this whole story's fake. The teachers are out of control, and what what they're trying to do, the liberals, are bully conservatives. Yeah, to not pay attention to what's going on in their kids' classrooms. And that's that's the way it is. And, you know, part of the problem is is that, it, well, we got these, these activist teachers all over the country, but the school boards are so political. You know, there really should be a requirement to be on a school board. You should have to have a child in the school. I agree. You know, and, you know, it's like the Parent Teachers Association. If you don't have a child in the school district, you should not be on a school board. Why? Why would someone who's not a parent with a child in school be concerned about what's going on in school. You know, school boards are very corrupt because a lot of money gets spent on school construction, computers, printer ink. You know how much money, the soap for the bathroom. Mm-hmm. So school board members are as corrupt as the Congress, okay? They're, they're all making side mm-hmm. deals. They, yep. get, they get all kinds of things going on. It's very corrupt, big government at the local level, your local school board, more so than you realize. Oh, yeah. And they're, you know. Anytime and, you have an organization – like an HOA or anything, there's corruption. Yeah. And, and seriously, sc- school boards are the worst. And Ron DeSantis has been getting rid of a lot of these wokesters on school boards by going around and endorsing parents and conservatives who are running for school board. But they're really, you know, if you don't have a child in the school district, you should not be on a school board. It's, it, it's like when we were, when the Boy Scouts, before they were destroyed by the wokesters yep. with the gay scoutmasters and all that. We would talk when this was an issue being discussed about gay scout leaders. You know, we would say the the solution to this problem is the only people that should be Boy Scout leaders, with the exception of Eagle Scouts, because that's a different thing. But other than Eagle Scouts, no one should be a Boy Scout leader who doesn't have a boy in the troop. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, I was in Scouts. I was a Boy Scout, Cub Scout, Weeblow, all that stuff. I don't know why a grown man 
who does not have, unless they're an Eagle Scout, because I that's think you different. know why. Yeah, well, how do you figure it out? Why would a grown man who does who's not an Eagle Scout, who doesn't have a boy in the Boy Scout troop, want to be a Boy Scout leader? You know, if I went down to the local Girl Scouts, our daughter's grown; she's not in Scouts. And I say I want to be a Girl Scout leader. They'd say I was a creep. <laughs> I would say that too. And yeah, yeah, exactly. And that is that is creepy. Yeah. You know, li- liberals. You know, the thing with liberals though is they always push too far. And you know, Libs of TikTok made a big mistake by letting her identity be known. And I, I think she made her identity known because she's getting invites to speak. At she like, wants to do, yeah. Well, you, you know, know, why not? She can make a yeah. lot of money doing speaking they, engagements. Yeah, they, but I saw her interview. She really should keep her mouth shut. Yeah, she's not all that sharp. No. But she wants to she wants to speak at CPAC and Turning Point and all that, and I get it. But she they're going to destroy her one day. And in fact, they were talking about her in these house hearings this week with Twitter, to, and, and she really should have kept her identity secret. They're eventually going to do with her what they're doing to James O'Keefe now. They're going to force her off all the platforms and destroy her life because, you know, libs of TikTok is probably – you know, and I want you to think about this. She you might know, be on her way to making a, a media well, empire. We, you know, so there's a lot maybe. of opportunities coming her way. So I, I don't blame her for that. She's pro- she might be creating a whole like a Turning yeah. Point USA type thing. I don't know, but but you know, over the years there have been all of these different advocates that uh, on the right who have been advocating for things or against things. You know, like Pat Roberts and the Christian Coley, mm-hmm. the libs of TikTok is one of the most effective activists in the history of the conservative movement. What she has done is amazing because she's not out there saying, well, we can't let this in the schools. She's showing the teachers in their own videos, in their own classrooms, yeah. bragging about these things that are wrong that they're doing. And that it's really almost like investigative reporting, but she's just going on TikTok and grabbing their videos. She, amazing. She has had more influence than... Most any other conservative activist I can think of, more even than Pat Robertson, when you look at what oh, yeah. she's done. She's had influence over Florida politics, for sure. All over the country. Remember, DeSantis offered his home as a refuge for the her. governor's mansion. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, the governor's mansion. Yeah, and you know now she's being harassed. They dox her and everything else. So she really should have kept her identity secret because she's so effective. Yeah, but she's going to make a lot of money, her. so it's tempting there. Because like I said, she's going to do speaking, and she might be creating mm-hmm. an, her own media empire. She's got merch. Mm. I understand that, but she needs um, – she's not – I don't know. Maybe she was nervous on Tucker. She just isn't super savvy, but she's definitely on to something that was uh, original and very uh, clever. Oh yeah, she's awesome. Uh, you know what she does. Um, so I'm. You know, she has a lot going for her in that sense, for sure. Now I want to tell you guys, we just started sleeping a few nights ago on the new My Pillow. Mike Lindell calls it the My Pillow Two Point and, you know, the, the my pillow is like the perfect invention. And I never would have dreamed that Mike Lindell could have improved on perfection, but he did. The my pillow 2.0 has that same patented fill inside that the my pillow that started it all has, but it also has temperature regulating technology in the materials. Your head doesn't get hot at all. So you never have to flip your pillow over because it's too hot. You know, when you flip your pillow over, you're waking up, you're losing that sleep. We've been sleeping on it now for three nights, I think. It's amazing. Oh my goodness. It's 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 incredible. We're we're not using our other my pillows anymore. It's got anymore. a different kind of cover. Um <clears throat> yes. it's a different material yeah. than the other pillows. Yeah. It's like thicker and it's a different type of fabric. Well, that's where the material. cooling technology is. Yeah, and you really don't have you don't your head does not get hot at all. It's no, amazing. And it's that's amazing. I think one of the biggest problems when you sleep Absolutely. is the heat from your head. And then you have to flip your pillow. Or, or, you know, especially if you're like over 50 and you're a woman and you're going through hot flashes, which I'm going through. Yeah. It is awful when you wake up, your heart's pounding and when you're hot and that, that really, if you have the the new pillow and the sheets, you will sleep so much more comfortably. I mean, I am so comfortable now when I sleep, I never wake up hot or having to flip anything or I, I really sleep much better. It's amazing. Yeah. Now again, you could take advantage of all the specials at mypillow.com with our promo code Kane, K A N E at checkout. Not just the ones we highlight. But this new My Pillow, the My Pillow 2.0, you've got to get it. It's buy one, get one free. So we got two of them. 
and you can get any fill level you want. We got the firm. Yeah, I love it. But when you get the two, you just buy one, get one free. You can get them different firm levels. You can get one soft, one the full fill, fill, whatever fill you want in either one, you can choose when you order. Yeah, it actually feels cooler when you're laying it's on amazing. it. It's yeah. amazing. You just put your hand on it, you can tell. Yeah, it feels cooler when you lay on it. So go to MyPillow.com, order your MyPillow 2.0. It's buy one, get one free mm-hmm. with our promo code Kane at checkout, K-A-N-E. We'll be right back. After this, are you looking for a unique and profitable business opportunity? Have you thought about an ignition interlock device business? To give offenders a second chance, courts are often willing to allow convicted DUI drivers to install interlock devices so they can continue to drive their vehicles. These devices work by having the driver perform a breathalyzer test in order to start their car. More and more judges are offering these devices, and you can learn everything you need to know in the book, How to Start an Interlock Business, available online at the Interlock. Lockbook.com. This downloadable ebook has tons of useful information that you won't find anywhere else. In this must read book, you'll learn how to find ignition interlock partners, how to pick the right business model, understand the different types of services, learn to analyze potential service center locations, discover how to streamline business operations, how to apply for the right business license, how to stay in compliance, and much, much more. What are you waiting for? Don't blow and drive. Read and buy the book, How to Start an Interlock Business online at theinterlockbook.com. That's theinterlockbook.com. Have you or a loved one ever suffered a stroke? Have you asked yourself, what does it feel like to have a stroke? How do you move on with your life? The answers to those questions and more can be found in the book, Emerging from the Dark, from author and stroke survivor, Terrence Ang. Did you know that a stroke is a common medical issue that most people don't understand? In fact, medical professionals often fail to fully grasp what it takes to recover from a stroke or how much energy and grit that journey takes for the stroke survivor. Author Terrence Ang has assembled a collection of moving stories from people in all all stages of stroke recovery. Readers will find hope and inspiration from the unimaginable courage and determination in these true stories. Emerging from the dark will change the way you see people recovering from strokes. This is a must-read book, not only for stroke survivors and their families, but it's also perfect for physicians and other health professionals. Emerging from the dark from author Terrence Hang is available on Amazon in Kindle, paperback, and hardcover editions. Order your copy right now. Are you looking for inspiration? Are you ready to move from being tired to being inspired? Work can be stressful and a burden, but it doesn't have to be. Now is the time to take the first step to improve your well-being and your quality of life. You can regain your enthusiasm and enjoy what you do with the book, Burnout Recovery Guide for Female Entrepreneurs, from author Cassia Richter. In this must-read and life-changing book, you will find that perfect balance so everything can fall into place for you. All the strategies and tools you need are found in this Informative and useful book. Burnout slowly creeps to the surface and can easily steal your joy without you even noticing it. By learning to watch out for the signs and find solutions before it's too late, you can avoid its detrimental effects. If you want to have it all a thriving career, pristine mental health, and a happy family life, then buy this book today. Burnout Recovery Guide for Female Entrepreneurs from author Cassia Richter is available on Amazon and at WellbeingStrategist.com. Do you like watching gamers live stream on Twitch? Then you'll love the Twitch stream OG Dicedon. That's OG Dice D A D O N. Check him out for live and entertaining streaming to learn new strategies on the top games. You can chill and have fun as he shows you his strategies and winning gameplay. Join the community right now. OG Dicedon. OG Dice D A D O N. He streams Monday through Friday starting around 5 p.m. Central Time. OG Dicedon on Twitch. Twitch, follow, subscribe, and tell all your friends. You are listening to the Brian Craig Show podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at BrianCraigShow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and Co-host Kathy, thanks for tuning in, everyone. And and by the way, those of you that listen to me on the radio, I will be on the air live the morning after the Super Bowl. Okay, I don't. I don't even know when it is. It's it's uh, tomorrow. Who's tomorrow playing? Night. I have no idea. 
I don't follow football. I know the Dolphins got into the playoffs and, of course, blew it. If the like Dolphins were in do. it, I would watch it, you know, because, you know, Miami Dolphins were in Florida. But I, I, I don't get their coach at all. I, I don't. He looks like a barista. I don't watch football. I have no interest in football. You know, football. we really were getting into football. I, I, I was getting Brian because I like football. I always watched it. I never liked before it. Before we got married. And I'm, I come from a big football family. Not that they play, but fans. And I got Brian into college ball. Um, yeah. About four years ago or longer, so. Longer. Yeah, and we were watching all the FSU games. Like and, seven, uh, eight years ago. Yeah, and we were watching NFL and everything. And then they started with the national anthem crap, and we stopped watching football completely. Now, what, what and hap- I miss it. Well, it was a little bit before that, actually. With the Trump rallies were going on on Saturday and Sundays. Now, for me, it was the national and anthem. There were mul- and when the multiple Trump rallies began on the weekend, I stopped watching. And then the- Well, that was then, Saturdays, yeah. And, and then the kneeling, that was the end of it. And, and I've never, never gone back. back. We I ever went back. I have no interest in football. I have no interest in the Super Bowl. I will be on the air live the Monday after the Super I, Bowl. I'll watch the Super Bowl. I like to watch yeah. it. And, well, I'll, I'll, I'm going to go to sleep early. And <laughs> Well, what time's the game? They're usually early. They're like, I don't know. I like to watch it. Seven I like to point. watch the commercials. I don't care. But I watch it every I year. I don't care. So join me on the radio Monday. I will be there live. The rest, you know, half the country will be asleep and hungover, but I'll be there. It'll be like don't doing. Don't call in about the Super Bowl. No, I, I don't even know who's playing. Kansas City Chiefs, I know they're play, playing. I don't know who else. Yeah, I heard that. I don't care. They I just, a lot of fans. I have no interest in it at all. All right. So I just want you guys to know that I'm going to be on the air on Monday after the Super Bowl live. Okay. So this E. Jean Carroll is a complete lunatic. Yeah. Um, Donald Trump says he will provide a DNA sample. Oh my goodness! To be ca- uh, compared against stains on the dress of a woman who accused him of rape, though he'll only do it under certain conditions. His attorney said Friday. So this is like the blue dress. Mm. What kind of stains? I don't want to know. Oh my I don't know. Goodness, I don't know. Um, Yikes. Trump's attorney told a Manhattan federal court in a letter that Trump will turn over the sample as long as lawyers for his accuser, E. Jean Carroll, provide missing pages from a DNA report on the dress first. Her attorney called that offer disingenuous Mm. in an effort to delay the trial. She submitted a letter to the judge saying the sudden offer of DNA after Trump refused to provide it for three years was a legally frivolous delay tactic. The time has come for him to face a jury, Kaplan wrote noting that the period when new facts could be unearthed for trial expired in October. According Mm -hmm. to a court filing, Trump and Carroll are both listed as their lawyer's first possible witnesses at a trial that is scheduled to start April 24th. 79-year-old Carroll has sued Trump for defamation and for rape, saying Trump turned a friendly encounter at a luxury Manhattan department store in late 95 or early 96 into a violent rape. Okay, now I just don't now, believe that at all. First off, Trump's I don't many things, but he's not a rapist. I don't believe this story. Of course, it's no. not true. But her story right here shows it's not true. If if a woman is a victim of a violent rape, yeah, she knows exactly when it happened, where it happened, where she were oh, was, yeah, you never and, forget. And, and the date. It, it, it was either late ninety five or early ninety six. Yeah, that's too vague. She would believe me. Know exactly exactly when it the happened. Time. Yeah, it's a traumatic event. And is it possible that they actually had a tryst in a dressing room? And uh, he says no. And it was consensual. He and says it was no. like a 10 minute thing. And then, and she feels, you know, upset about it. And she's no, now turned it into it's, this. It's not possible because Trump said it never happened. What Trump would make a woman just make this up out of the blue. I mean, she just um, wants attention she, or what is it? Well, there's money to be made. She had a yeah. book a couple years ago. True. She's probably, uh, if she's not yet, she could be on the speaking circuit. You, you can make a whole Slightly living. Slightly deranged. Yeah, you can make a whole living trashing Trump. Uh, Trump has insisted the meeting never happened, including during an October deposition. And his uh, lawyer said the same in his latest court filing. Um. The woman and her lawyers were trying to gain a advantage by claiming Trump's DNA is on the dress she oh wore the gosh. night she was raped. She hasn't washed it since ninety five. Yeah, like Lewinsky, she kept it in a suit as a souvenir. Yeah, but she didn't. She didn't keep it for that many years. I know that's ridiculous. she didn't keep it for decades. Well, okay, you never know. Now you know Trump always knows what he's doing, but giving DNA is a very dangerous thing. I don't trust that. You know, I've never done one of those DNA tests. And, you know, DNA can not only be obtained and tested, DNA can also be planted. 
And like with um, OJ, right? Yeah, well, no, you know what I mean. But no, DNA <laughs> is is a very dangerous thing. And you know the these DNA companies like Twenty Three and Me and everything. What they've done is created an, a national, really an international, but a national DNA database. And I know some good things have come out of it. Like they got that Golden State Killer, and yeah. there have been other serial killers and murderers have been found and and um, remains that were found decades ago, never identified, have been identified. I I, I, I know good things have happened out of it, mm-hmm. but but here's the thing, okay. Here, here's the thing. It can also be planted, all right? And I just don't like this idea of them having this database. I'm not an anti-government conspiracy person. However, when, uh, when you look at what the government has done to Donald Trump since he came down the escalator, I'm not going to go through the Hannity list of everything. You guys know. Well, I mean, he's going to give them his DNA to have possession of it. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I mean, you, you know, weird. you cannot trust the government to have a DNA database well brian and also so he takes they they get his dna on a swab in the mouth that's how they do it now yeah he's gonna hand that over to whoever whoever and then they're gonna have that Mm -hmm. forever yeah sure god knows what they can do with it exactly yeah that's not a good idea no trump should not be giving his dna to anyone i mean this is maybe they can clone (laughs) trump well that's not a bad idea (laughs) <laughs> Although Baron looks just like him. He's yeah, he close does. to a clone. But no, this is um I don't like this at all. No, I don't either. I and don't think that's no, a good idea. I, I don't trust especially with Trump. I yeah, do not I think trust that's a bad idea. I do not trust the system with Trump and he should not be giving his DNA unless he is ordered by the courts. I to agree. Do it. Okay. Now Mike Pence is is he's one of the worst people in America. And and I'll tell you why I say that. Not just because he's a traitor. Okay, and now he's become this big Democrat advocate and defender. I don't like the fact that he goes around acting like he's the most holier than thou Christian. He's been a real disappointment. You know, when when he behaves the way he did. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I've I've been talking a lot. He's now the the liberal go-to guy. And right now he's involved in a major operation to clear Joe Biden of any wrongdoing in this document scandal. Now, he had said in the past, Pence, that not only did he not have classified documents, that um, there was no reason for someone like him to have them. And then when Biden got in trouble, all of a sudden he had 12 classified documents Mm -hmm. at his house. Well, the FBI did a search of Mike Pence's new mansion that he just recently bought in Indiana. Uh, The FBI has found more classified documents at Mike Pence's Indiana home. Um, adding to the material discovered by his own team earlier. Mm. Mike Pence advisor Devin O'Malley said the Department of Justice completed a five-hour search and found at least one more file with classified uh, markings following a consensual search of the Pence residence on Friday. O'Malley said in a statement that the Justice Department completed a thorough and unrestricted search uh, for five hours, removed one document, and uh, with classified markings and six additional pages without such markings that were not discovered in the initial review. Um, th- now, see what Pence has done. See, I don't buy any of this, okay? Like we we're talking about, you could plant DNA. All of a sudden, Pence has classified. And what Pence has done, mm-hmm. he's, he, he's colluded. He's, in, he's, he's in involved in a cover-up conspiracy of b- what Biden did with his documents. To make it seem like, well, everyone has classified documents at home. It's no big deal. We all have them. I, I don't know how they got there, but we all have them. It kind of deflates. It's kind of like wh- how, when they found classified documents with Biden, it kind of deflated the allegation against Trump. And this is having the same effect. Well, yeah. Well, this is being, meant to. This is being done by design. And they're doing this so that Biden's now off the hook. And the. The classified document scandal has now disappeared, and it's disappeared because Mike Pence came out and he had classified documents when he previously said that he didn't. So I don't buy that they found now 13 classified documents at Pence's house. First off, this is a new house he's in. This is not the house he was in when he was vice president. He's got this new mansion now in yeah, Indiana. Yeah, so he'd have to move them. It, yeah, exactly. Makes no sense at no. all. And he is in total collusion, yeah. this snake. He, I, he really is. He, he is. He's like one of those fake 
evangelical preachers that's like total fraud. It's just yeah. in it for the money. Yeah. That's what Pence is like. He Pence yeah, he's a total fraud. is a complete fraud. Yeah. He's a very bad person. And and I'll I'll tell you, this is saying a lot. He's as evil and as corrupt as Joe Biden. Yeah, I think you're right. And and now he's at the point where they have finally opened up the books to him. You can tell all he cares about is money because every time he does an interview, oh, yeah. every other word is in my book. Yeah. In my book. The in answer's my book. in my book. The answer's in my book. Well, if you read my book. Yeah, he's, he's know, horrible. If you read my book, you'll find this. I bet he he was leaking things and stabbing to the Trump pre- in the oh, back yeah. over and over and over again. Oh, yeah. It was probably his idea for Trump to give the January 6th speech. It might would, have been. I would not be surprised. No, I, I would not be surprised if he was no. in on that. No, I wouldn't either. Now, I want to take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters for their support of the program. Thank you so much. And, you know, if you would like to become a Patreon supporter, there's a link in the episode description. And there's also a direct link on my website, briancraigshow.com. And it's a great way for you to support the show. And it does help us out a lot. Our top Patreon supporters get a live on-air thank you shout out on each and every podcast episode. So the names I'm going to read off now are our top Patreon supporters. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, Gary, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Rick, Nick, Wesley, Macho, Rome, Wisconsin, Mike P, Maria, Paulette, and Carlos. These are our top Patreon supporters. Thank you all for your support of the program. Yeah, so, you know, Mike Pence is the worst. And, you know, this is just, uh, this is just what we're going to have to deal with with Mike Pence. Now, here's another story that I want to get into. Okay, now, this involves the exodus from California. It's in the Daily Mail today. Thousands of Californians are fleeing to Nevada and they're messing up everything in Nevada. They're causing congestion in the streets. It's a strain on city services. Um, pricing on local homes are making uh, rentals and uh, other pro- and, and buying property out of the price range of the locals in Nevada. We're having a similar thing here in Florida. Okay, you know I talk about this a lot. Kathy and I could no longer afford to live on our street. All right, we we've got the one of the cheapest houses on the street. We've lived here. About 18 years, 18, 19 years, and um, there's a couple people on our street, maybe three others on the street that have been here longer than us. So, you know, so we're maybe the third or fourth <laughs> cheapest house on the street because all this move to Florida has driven property values up beyond imagination. And, you know, at first, and even still now, people are welcoming you know, all these people that are fleeing these blue states to Florida and Texas and here, here in Nevada. And um, I don't know what people are doing now that are looking to buy a home or especially looking to rent. A lot of kids, when I say kids, I'm talking about people under 30, are moving back in with their parents, with their families, right? They're married. They have kids because they can't afford rents. People um, have good jobs, they're hardworking people, their lease is up, and the next year it's going through the roof here in Florida. And I'm starting to get a little ticked about it, okay, with these Californians and, and people from some of the other blue states, but the Californians in particular. We get a lot of Californians in Florida because we have a similar climate. Um, they have wrecked their states. They wrecked their blue states for decades with all their liberal BS, and I'm glad they've had an awakening in our MAGA now, Republican now, but after they have wrecked their states, they're, f- they're fleeing to our state, Florida, here in Nevada, it's happening, and they're making life unaffordable for people that have been running their states right for decades. I, I don't think they're wrecking the state. Well, if These they're making conser- rents unaffordable. That's not their like fault. They're conservatives. There's a lot more conservatives in California than they realize. That's and true. They are fleeing to here. Yeah. They flipped. That's why Miami-Dade got flipped. And yeah. why the guy in New York lost. That's because correct. Because they all left New York the and Republicans California. Republicans all left. That's right. It is driving up the price of homes, no doubt. But I don't think they're wrecking the state with ideology. These are conservatives. No, I don't mean ideology, but they're, it's, it's a big Well, str- they're driving up the prices of homes, no doubt. But I think that'll well, taper off. in Florida. Eventually. In Florida, we got a big problem that renters are running into. And our local news stations have been for months, maybe a year, doing regular stories on this. They've even had specials on it. 
where people that are like middle class people are now living in their cars because rents have gotten so out of control in Florida because of all the people fleeing blue states. So, yeah. you know, well, it's and in California, they're used to high home prices and high rents. So the yeah. high prices in Florida that are normal to them. I was looking because our daughter lives in California now and I was looking at homes kind of she lives in Los Angeles area. And I was looking at homes in Pasadena and other areas, you know, just I do that all the time. I like to look at home prices and things in different areas. And a house our size, which is like a 1,200 square foot house. We don't have have a big house. We have a small house. A 3-2. In a decent neighborhood in California, Los Angeles, is like $950,000. And the one that is not a fixer-upper, that's a nice, decent house. And if you come here, we live in a nice neighborhood in Palm Beach. You can get that same house right now for about six hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, six seven. Yeah. Now, before all these people started fleeing California and New York, the prices in our neighborhood were about three fifty. Yeah. For our house, our size. Yeah. Now they're at like six hundred, because people coming from New York and California, that's a bargain to them. That's to right. To get a twelve hundred square foot house for six hundred thousand. Yeah. 10 minutes from the beach. That's like a bargain to these people. And we, so they're, they're willing and to pay. We paid a lot less than even that three fifty because we moved here 18 years ago. Oh, and yeah, you know, so people are, people are struggling in Florida looking to buy homes and really struggling to rent. Even, you know, Steve came, one of his daughters yeah. has moved back home with her kids because the rents are yeah. so outrageously expensive. They are. So it's a problem. It's, it's a big problem. There's benefits to it. It's had an impact. Yeah, the, if you're selling your there, house. There's been, well, there's benefits to, you know, it, 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 there's been a massive migration in this country over political ideology. Yes. Which has never happened before. There's been migrations. Like after the Civil War, a lot of blacks migrated to the North. And they- Or and, West. And, they, and, and it caused a lot of problems because- the sl- the uh, former slaves, a lot of them were highly skilled blacksmiths, carpenters. Well, it was their whole economy, you know. So, you know, it co- totally collapsed. Well, no. So, what would happen is these? Uh, not all slaves were highly skilled, but a lot of them had skills like blacksmithing, carpentry, and things like mm-hmm. this. And they would move up north or go out west, and they would take jobs away from people that already were doing that where they were, True. and they worked for less. So, it was a problem. But we've never had a migration, and that and that really disturb things a lot because they were because of what it the effect it had on the job market we've never had a migration though over ideology no that's what's happening now and we've talked about that on the show and i think kids in college with like the roe v wade and this stuff i think you're going to see a huge divide in the and i'm all for it i i let all the liberals leave florida and let all the conservatives come here i'm i'm happy for it and I think that might make things better. Well, what's happened though is these these blue states are more liberal than they were before because all the conservatives have left. And a lot of these blue states do like Kevin McCarthy's from California, mm-hmm. right? A lot of these places like Pennsylvania and California and New York, they may be Democrat states, but they have conservative pockets and there's mm-hmm. conservative House members in them. That's gonna change because so many conservatives have fled these blue states. So we're becoming more red, more conservative, but the liberal states are becoming more liberal. Well, I think what's going to happen is when you have liberal cities, like you have Oregon, you have like the west, the eastern part of Oregon, they want to move in and become part of Idaho. Yeah. What you're going to happen when you see these divisions of people migrating based on politics, which I think is definitely a trend happening. Um, people that live to these liberal utopias, unless they are totally far gone, liberal wackadoos, they will eventually realize this is not utopia. This is a nightmare I'm living in. And and I got to go back to where I, yeah. I got to become a conservative because I don't like the way this is. Yeah. The left have become mm-hmm. so radicalized in their thinking um, it, and if it, if it filters into all aspects of the culture, schools, politics, everything that I think some of these people that live in these liberal utopias that move there for whatever reason, if they have a brain in their head, will eventually be like, I, this is not for me. I, 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 this, it'll no. be an awakening for some of them, for some of them, yeah. but I have no problem with the division of ideology. Do you, I think it's a uh, good thing. I, well, 
in other the, than the housing, do you think it, it's a good or bad? Thing? It it might mess up a lot of things like the electoral college. I mean, there may just it's going to affect a lot of things that we don't know about yet until we get the next census or so. And <clears throat> because the we don't know how many people have moved with the whole migration yeah, it'll has be been interesting. It's going to change so many things in in this country that we don't realize yet. Listen, we're going to take a quick break though. When we get back, there's a lot more to talk about. Don't go anywhere. Take your financial game to the next level. Take control of your financial and personal well-being with the winning playbook from authors Rob Welsh and Jonathan R. Scott, available on Amazon. This is the essential guide to transforming your career into a money-making machine and becoming the CEO of your own legacy. Financial empowerment expert Rob Welsh and former NFL offensive tackle Jonathan R. Scott have dedicated themselves to successfully coaching athletes of all levels to make their money work for them. Them. The Winning Playbook is your personal financial coach, giving you the ins and outs of how to make the most of the rewards from your hard work. You will learn what you must know to get what you want from life. It's a well-written, practical personal finance book and a must-read for athletes and entrepreneurs alike. From authors Rob Welsh and Jonathan R. Scott, The Winning Playbook, Strategies for Life on and Off the Field. Order your copy on Amazon right now. Now available on Amazon is the book, Your Happiness Depends on Your Choice. Are you on the right path or the wrong path? Our universe is always moving and evolving based on precise, absolute, and unchangeable laws. If everyone proceeds in accordance with the laws, they are most definitely headed for perfection and they will reach a happy, successful life, a life filled with peace. Whatever path you choose and have persistence and perseverance treading it and have no intention of changing your path, then the forces and facilities in the universe will accompany you and help you tread that path. But how do you choose the right path and walk with perseverance? The answers to those questions and more are found in the new and must-read book, Your Happiness Depends on Your Choice, available on Amazon in Kindle, paperback, and hardcover editions. Order your copy right now. Want to know where all the bodies are buried? Author Robert Allen Miltonberg holds the key to that question in his book, Pool Boy to the Mob, Everybody Out of the Pool. Author Robert Allen Miltonberg holds the key to that question in his book, Pool Boy to the Mob. Welcome to Mob Amy Beach. This book is a fictionalized account of Miltonberg working at a mob-owned Miami Beach hotel in the 70s. If you're a fan of The Godfather, Goodfellas, or The Sopranos, you will love this story that's full of colorful characters and wisecracking wise guys. It's a story with everything from playboy bunnies and weaponized parrots to shattering the glass ceiling and getting away with murder all in paradise. This is a wise guy tale you've never heard. Surrounded by pools, the trick for Bobby Moskowitz was not slipping in the one thicker than water. Bobby lived to tell the tales and now you can read all about it. The funniest mob novel since Jimmy Breslin's The Gang That Couldn't Shoot Straight. Pool Boy to the Mob. Everybody out of the pool. From author Robert Allen Miltonberg, available on Amazon. Order your copy right now. Attention startups and small business owners. Are you looking for an affordable solution to launch or boost your sales? The Store App e-commerce platform is the answer. Online at storeapp.io. Costing as little as Netflix, it offers the best return on investment for your business. With their easy-to-use platform, you can build and launch an online store in minutes and start selling where people are most active and actively looking for products such as yours. Amazon, Google, eBay, Pinterest, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, and with its free digital marketing tools, you can make use of SEO, email, and social marketing tools, as well as paid ads. This is all done through one single dashboard. The only way to succeed in selling is with an omni-channel approach, like all the large brands do. Now you, too, can do so with StoreApp.io. What are you waiting for? Build and run your own e-commerce store in less than 10 minutes. Go right now to StoreApp.io. That's StoreApp.io. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Oh, man. So there's a tragic story here in Florida. Okay, and these stories, I haven't heard one of these stories in a long time, 
you used to hear about them more often than not. And there was a very high profile case in the eighties where um, there's an elderly couple. One is sick and the other one kills them and they call it a mercy killing. Yeah. You know, the mercy killings. There was a big one in Miami back in the eighties. I can't remember the name of the guy. I remember he killed his wife. Went on trial. They made a movie about it with Marcus Well, he Welby. says it was a mercy killing. Yeah. So, Maybe well, she's just annoying the crap out who of him. Know, you never know. And here's a new one. Um, a woman who fatally shot her terminally ill husband inside a Florida hospital and then barricaded herself in the room for four hours before surrendering is in an ultimately failed murdered suicide. So it was supposed to be a murder-suicide Uh she said her husband was not strong enough to pull the trigger by himself. Ellen Gilland, age 76, told officers that her 77-year-old husband, Jerry, had been ill for some time, and they had planned the shooting together, a police spokesman said. Um, she was denied bond on Friday after testimony from a psychiatrist revealed that she was suicidal. The psychiatrist also said her mental health has improved since the shooting. There was a hearing which contained testimony from their niece, the daughter of Jerry's brother. That was the husband she shot. She said that they both love and support Ellen and hold no animosity against her. One of the investigators took the stand and said that Jerry had planned to shoot himself, but wasn't able to do it because he didn't have enough strength to pull the trigger. Instead, he loaded the gun and held his high school sweetheart's wrist as she fired Oh, my goodness. Uh, the judge denied her bond. Um, while they agreed it was tragic, her actions were premeditated murder. The state does not allow mercy killings. She's been charged with premeditated first-degree murder and two accounts of aggressive assault mm. with a deadly weapon with intent to kill and remained in jail without uh, bond. Um, the plan of the couples, so says the wife, has been weeks in the works, okay? Mm. Uh, the plan that she, uh, was that she would fatally shoot her terminally ill husband and then kill herself. But after shooting him in the head, mm. she couldn't carry through with the rest. Instead, still armed, she was in a four-hour standoff with police until officers were able to use a non-lethal lethal explosive to distract her and take her into custody. After the shooting, her husband at about 11.30 a.m., she refused to come out. So she was in there for four hours with him dead after he'd been oh shot in the goodness. head. That's scary. Afterward, it was revealed that she had planned to turn the gun on herself in a murder-suicide, but she could not go through it. This is up in Daytona Beach, by the way. Um, and uh, there's a lot of other details. Okay. You know, I know a lot of people say that mercy killings are okay. That, that is a very dangerous and slippery slope. And, you know, a lot of times an older man could do a mercy killing on his wife and he's got some young hoochie, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you know what I mean? Going no, on. If you allow that, you're going to find mercy killings all over. You can't have that. No, in society. no, That's just, you. Well, she cannot. wanted me to kill her. So, no, you can't. Yeah, you can't and, do that. Right? And I got to tell you, um, you know, a lot of times I, I just don't know if somebody I understand if somebody's in a lot of pain, and yeah. so, but there's drugs for that. They just dope you well, up. Well, he was in a hospital. He was getting treated. So, yeah. you know, he was getting taken care of if he had pain or, or yeah. anything else. Um, but, yeah, and it's sad. But, you know, whether she's telling the truth or not, it's still a planned murder, you know. So, yeah, and can't I'm, have that. And if, if they allow people to get away with it, it will be very common. I can't remember oh, yeah. the last time I heard of one here in Florida or one at all, really. I mean, not that they haven't happened, but I haven't seen one in the news. It seems like in years and years and years. And and people have a lot of sympathy for these killers. How do you feel about the right to die? Like there's countries where you can, there's doctors that all, you know, facilitate your death. Yeah, like that Kevorki in here. Remember right. All those days? There's our, there are countries that allow you to do that. And people go to those countries. How do you, how do you feel about it? I'm against that too. You know, the 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 thing about that is that's suicide and right that, you, doctor you know, assisted suicide you can't go to heaven if you commit suicide but if you're somebody who lives in pain and I you know I've had periods of back pain which have been d debilitating and horrible I have um, arthritis in my lower back and you get flare ups and the you can just ask Brian you're like in tears the pain can be so bad but then it goes away luckily for me but it comes and goes. But somebody who lives in constant pain, that is like the one thing I don't think I can handle. Um, yeah. You know, I feel sorry for them. And you do get to a point where it affects you mentally. 
and you're like, I just can't take this anymore. And drugs just don't work. They don't help you. You're just in constant pain. You know, I feel bad for people like that because when you're not getting any kind of relief, you know, and it's constant, you can't sleep, you can't do anything. What do you do? Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? There are drugs, but like mm. not every drug works for everybody. Not everybody, you know, when I had my surgery, they gave me um, oxycodone in the hospital. It did nothing, yeah. nothing for me at yeah. all. And uh, I was surprised because everybody talks about it. It did nothing for me. I had to take um, Tylenol and muscle relaxers to, to do the trick. But not every dr- not everybody gets that kind of relief from pain. And I, I feel really bad for people that live in severe, constant pain. I don't know how they do it. And I can understand that where yeah. you're like, I've had enough. I can't take it anymore. But I, so they want, if they want to, you know, end their life, you know, they can do it themselves. But if they have a doctor help, they'll know. But I just still don't agree with it. I mean, I sympathize with that. But part, I still feel like it's, like it's wrong. Like, you know, I'm very of pro-life and I feel like God should be the only per- entity that decides, yeah. you know, when it's your time. And I would worry about that too. If somebody in my family did that, I'd worry about their mortal soul or their immortal soul or whatever. I'd worry like, is this going to be bad for you in the afterlife? And mm. what does this mean? And those kind of things go through your mind. So it's, I feel bad for people, but, but yeah, with this, this is like, she planned a murder and she can say that that's what they did, but maybe not. Maybe she just killed him. Maybe she you was never tired, of, tired exactly. of taking care of him. And she just came up with the story and thought she'd get away with it. Exactly. It, it, yeah. It's, it's a, it's, it's a bad move. No, it, it's sad, but she's got to be prosecuted. Now, Kamala Harris got really, <laughs> really lucky yesterday. Okay. And I'll tell you how she got lucky. She gave an interview mm-hmm. and the um, reporter asked some very good questions about her husband kissing Joe Biden on the lips at the state oh. of the union. Uh, and here's how here's how Kamala got lucky. It was on Univision, so the question was asked in Spanish, mm. and her answer you can't hear it because the translator giving her answer in Spanish is speaking over her. So I want to just read you what she said and, instead of playing the audio. I, I'll play the audio, and you'll 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 let me play the audio first, then I'll read her answer. Okay. Okay. They asked her about the um, kiss between her husband, the second gentleman, and the first lady. Yeah, see, that's that's the reporter. Oh my god! Yeah, I know it's it's not intelligent. Then then you get her answer. Listen. Okay, I, I don't understand Spanish, so I'm just gonna have to read it to you. She got she got lucky in that you there's can't. No audio. There's no audio yet. In English, in English. Yet, yet. So listen to this on Wednesday. I mean, this happened like days ago. Just finding out about this today. On Wednesday, a correspondent for Univision, an American Spanish language uh, television network, confronted Kamala Harris about the buzz surrounding the awkward kiss between her husband and Jill Biden. Kamala was caught off guard. As usual, her response to the question was a cackle, which you can't hear because the translator was talking. She's ridiculous. I can't wait till the English version of the answer comes out. Listen She did not answer the question and instead started talking about her husband's trip to Poland. She said about the kiss video, she says, I have not seen the video. Yeah, well, she was there in person when it happened. Okay, so she she saw it when it happened. I promise you she was looking right at him. Yeah. Yeah. And Kamala goes on. Happy. She says, I don't know, but I do know that the first lady and second gentleman are working on um, on very important work against anti-Semitism. So now she hides behind this anti-Semitism thing, yep. you know, because I think he's Jewish. There's an easy husband. way to answer that. You know, uh, you just say something like, well, they really get along. What can I tell you? I mean, or, you know, they have a bond because they're the spouse of, and just say, I don't know, you know, I saw the kiss. It was a little weird, but it was very short, you know, but when you get a still yeah. photograph, people can imagine it was like some long yeah. embrace. It was very short. And sometimes when people kiss on the cheek, it can get yeah. awkward and they end up kissing on the mouth. Even exactly. you know, like somebody doesn't get turn it. their head right or whatever. So I think a little too much. It's, it's, it was definitely an interesting picture and good for memes for sure. But I would have just brushed it off and been like, you know, it's people are making too much of it. It's no big deal. 
it's you know yeah. they get along and it's it's really a nothing because yeah. I don't think it's really anything. But mm-hmm. when you when you don't answer and you get defensive, then it becomes something. Well, with Kamala Harris, you know, with the with these Democrats, their first re, uh, reaction That's is right. to just lie That's and exactly spin right. and avoid. I mean, if this if this were me, I would have said what you said. Well, you know, they went for the cheek kiss and one mood. I don't know which one. They ended up yeah, on the lips. Exactly. You know. It's oh no my gosh. That you know, happens. You know. It better not happen again, Brad. You know, or something like that. But they. Oh well. You know. <laughs> They, they work together on it against anti-Semitism and da 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 I mean, you know, it, it, nothing's truthful with these people. Well, they get they get in a mode and they, they – it's like on autopilot. The spin mode, the opposite of yeah, O'Reilly. Yeah, it's, it's on autopilot with them after a while. They don't even really – their words that they're saying aren't even from their own mind. No. It's they don't even think for themselves no, anymore. They just right. become political robots. That's exactly right. Seriously. And they just say – it's like an automatic reaction. Instead of giving a genuine reaction – they're they're much more glib about it and 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 you know it exactly comes off as false exactly whatever she's ridiculous anyway. isn't she I don't think there's anything she can say that makes sense you know when when she was at the State of the Union you know she's she's short she's five one she was sitting so low they should really put some books under her to sit in that chair on the State of the Union so yeah, she's I think up you're higher right. I think they had a step stool at the debates because mm-hmm. you know somebody that's met her and he said she's about five one five two. Yes, yeah, that is are. short. My grandmother was four foot eleven, and she uh, probably used to be five one. And, and Judy Garland was four <laughs> foot eleven, and five foot one is not that much taller, and that is little. I mean, I'm five foot five, so if I have somebody standing up, they're like going to come up to about my chin or my lips. That's short. Yeah, that's really short. Well, you know, um, now that Trump is allowed back on Facebook, you know, people oh. back on Facebook. And, you know, he you said he can't post till June. He, well, he has a non-compete uh, with truth so that expires wait till June. But I know a lot of you are getting back on Facebook. Yes. We have a Brian Craig show podcast, Facebook group that Kathy moderates. Yeah. I put the link in your community section on YouTube just now. So you can click that link. Yeah. If you go to Brian's YouTube, uh, go to the community section and we put polls, we put pictures um, and uh, click that link. We have almost 3,000 members. It's very exciting. It's grown quite a bit lately. And we post articles. You can leave comments. Um, it's a lot of fun. So. Well, I used to have on my Facebook group, and it's the same Facebook group, the Brian Craig Show podcast Facebook group, Kathy Moderates. I used to have tens of thousands of followers. Yeah. And one day they all disappeared. And yeah. this was before Trump was banned. They just all, they, all my followers were taken away. Yeah. And so we had to start from scratch. Yeah, that's exactly right. And uh, that's what we're doing. So go go to my uh, Facebook page. And, you know, there was a, a, a guy called me on the radio yesterday. And um, he was the guy who called us a couple years ago where he deleted everybody in this Facebook group, concerned Facebook group, deleted their, their mm-hmm. thing. And I told him, don't do that. And, and they did this ceremony, like a Jim Jones ceremony, but they just deleted the Facebook page. And it was led by somebody in the group. And I said, well, maybe that person's a liberal. They got all you conservatives to delete exactly. their group. Exactly. And I, now Trump's allowed back on, and you, you got to start over like I'm yeah, doing. You guys got to get back on Facebook, join the group. And uh, I posted a lot of pictures from your cruise. Um, and we post, like I said, a lot of articles we talk about on this show and yeah. on your radio show, we post in there so you can leave your comments, yeah. meet some other nice people. So get back on yeah. On Facebook. Well, listen, we're all out of time for today, but we will be back next time. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Thanks for listening, and we will talk to you next time. Parents, grandparents, and teachers, there's a new children's book you will enjoy with your little ones. Buckley is a Busy Boy, from author Susan Hines. This fun children's book is filled with colorful illustrations and easy-to-follow rhyming text that will teach children how to connect with other children, help them learn, and discover how to play with other kids. Your kids will want to read Buckley is a Busy Boy over and over again. Join in on the adventures of Buckley as he learns healthy routines, explores the outdoors, and learns learns the meaning of family. Order your copy of Buckley is a Busy Boy from author Susan Hines online at tjppublications.com. That's tjppublications.com for Buckley is a Busy Boy from author Susan Hines.